Hello, Kevin. Hey, Greg. My name's Kevin Reinhardt. I practice mostly sculpture, and then I also have painting stuff that I do. So when I'm doing sculpture, I like, like working in wood. But I also think I'm pretty open to experimenting with whatever materials. So what do you have to do to these guys? These are on their final, their final sand. So I go through and I sand them down and then the glasses get painted black and the hair gets stained. I've been using like a, a gel stain, oh, okay. that I, an oil-based gel stain that I quite like because it sort of, it dries with a slight sheen. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's sort of reflective, like hair is reflective, I think. Cool. This is sort of the most, the most tedious part of the whole, all the, the sculpting stuff. Sanding takes the longest. The kicker is like I, I can't really figure out a substitute to like getting in with you know a balled up piece of sandpaper for these small details. I sort of have like I have all the rotary tools and stuff, but it, it's so hard with wood to not leave traces Go of the machine. It. Yeah. Oh. What's the wood you're working on? This is birch, which isn't my usual carving wood, but I chose this wood because there are elements that I tapped and I'm gonna screw a machine screw into. So I used, I purposely chose a, a hard wood, a hard dense wood that I knew would hold threads. I also, I also chose it for its coloring. Because of the scale of these, I was able to make them pretty easily out of a single piece of wood. So because there are no seams, I'm leaving the, the skin sort of raw wood. So his complexion is, is the color of the birch. I think that's one of the, that's one of the luxuries of, of fine art is that you can sort of be aggressive and delicate, you know, aggressively delicate about your finishing technique because they're treated preciously. This project's gonna come out as an edition of three. And mm -hmm. these are portrayals of the jazz pianist, Bill Evans. Bill Evans, one of the things that I love about Bill Evans, who these are based on, is that he did this series of albums called Conversations With Myself. And it was him recording three separate tracks on the piano and then playing them over top of each other to make the songs on that album. And he played, since he performed every track, I thought that the title was sort of in a literal way really nice. So whenever I work, I like to work in threes, but especially whenever I work on things concerning Bill Evans. I sort of find it necessary to work in threes because I love that album so much that I, I, I want things to reference that. There are like three dimensional elements to my paintings that sort of feel closer to sculpture than discipline painting. Is this a study? That's a study, yeah. A lot of the blind paintings start as studies like that at that scale. The test sort of color, and this one was uh, looking into translucency. I think I, when considering precision while I work, I sort of try and be as careful as possible, but I don't, I don't necessarily want to be a slave to the craft, if that, if that makes sense. All the way. So I think I, I'm conscious and careful while I'm working, 
but I'm not, I think that like on, on that painting, there are areas that the paint sort of crept, crept through in places that it's maybe not supposed to be. And I let that happen to a degree. I'll, I'll plan out some things like for this one, I'll, I'll, I would plan out where that dense strip is going to be approximately. So I sort of have a, a general idea of where things are going to go. And then I, I always try and leave room to adjust the composition as I'm making it. Cause I think that sort of is, is the best way to work with these, with these things. Yeah. So these paintings I've been making for a little while and they all reference specific architectural projects. I find a, a precedent project that I'm that I'm interested in and I research it and then I pull from scaled drawings of the project, the dimensions of the windows, the various windows of the building, and that then becomes the dimensions of the painting. So all of these blind paintings that I make directly reference in dimension and in concept usually a specific project that I'm researching. Crazy. That's really that's really heady. What's up with the lead? And then the lead suit is it's an origami folded lead sheet with paper making the shirt and the tie. It's just sort of like a study into dimensionality, I think. Is this its placement? This is its placement, yeah. It sits kind of slouched on the floor propped up it's it's supposed to be one to one scale with a with a real suit i saw people working with lead in the building industry as a waterproofing material and it seems like it was such an attractive material for its malleability and its weight because i think that it's literally heavy but because it's literally heavy it, it feels heavy it looks heavy. It looks heavy, yeah. That's cool. You have a lot of, not even, it's not processed. You have a lot of meaning behind your stuff. Talk about what- The bust. The yeah. bust. So that was a portrayal, a bust portrayal of a Japanese woman named Sada Abe, who sort of lived this, this treacherous love life and so much so that she became like lore and legend and a movie was made and i saw the movie and it's it's called in the realm of the senses and it's like a it's like a wild tragic love story kind of focused around her i saw that movie and it had very compelling imagery in it i sort of drew from that imagery in the representation of her the story of the knife the story of the knife is that she used it to well, I don't want to spoil it. It's a prop, yeah. <laughs> but she used it to ultimate effect, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, I think the literal translation of the of the movie in Japanese is Love is a Bullfight, which I thought was a beautiful title. All right, see you later. <laughs> I like these. You know, you have a, 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 a sense of architecturalness about your 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 art obviously yeah is that a, is that a bent of yours well, i went to school for architecture so technically my education is in architect more architecture than art it creeps into my practice sort of without trying i think a lot of my interests sort of straddle design and architecture and fine art well your sculpture it's, it's, it's a form of telling the story. I think a lot of the work for me is, is study into ideas or study into like compositions. So I think when I'm like the most invested and lost in my work, it's, it's, uh, it's because it's a study of something that I find interesting, which I think is what the busts are about, what the windows are about.
I, do, I think about things a lot before I do them. I don't really sketch stuff. You know, I, I sort of think about it and then I try and make it and I find that it's more worthwhile for me to try and make something and have it not turn out the way I want it to and then start over than it is to like try and plan out in sketch form exactly how it's going to go. So I think that's a big part of my process is sort of making stuff and then remaking it. Sort of comparing the two, the, the first iteration, the second iteration. Whenever I can, I like to work in threes because I feel like when you make three of something, you sort of, it's real easy to tell which one's the best. <laughs> did, did you forget your pants? Yeah. <laughs> It, it does have a beautiful fabric uh, quality. It's a material that really like requires you to manhandle it. Fashion design and architecture have similar fold overs they, yeah they overlap yeah definitely i've been working on a sewing project there's so much design and architecture dna in the patterns that i'm using to make to make the like clothes that i'm sewing it sort of seems like a one-to-one -one. Like the patterns exist in the same way that drawings of a building exist. Yeah, you definitely have um, full groups of work in yeah. the blinds, your architectural perspectives, you know? Mm -hmm. Talk about that for a second, like these and that piece, this one. Yeah, these, well, these three works, I think, in a very literal sense, build from this essay that I read by an architect named John Hayduck. He wrote this nice little essay about about the different degrees in which dimensionality is represented in drawing, right? Like within architecture, that's sort of a a big ongoing topic is the representation of something three dimensions and two dimensions. And in the essay, he sort of he sort of breaks breaks down how effective he thinks two dimensional things are, and he sort of he um, he puts like percentages to it. So he says like, and I don't remember the exact figures, but it's it's like uh, a technical two dimensional plan is like. 50% effective at communicating space. A perspectival, a two point perspectival drawing is like 75% effective. And then if you walk through and film a space that then gets you up to maybe 90% effective. But I think one of the things about the essay that I liked is that you never get to 100% effectiveness, communicating a three dimensional space in two dimensions. So it sort of made me think about the opposite. Communicating two dimensions with a three-dimensional object. So a lot of these projects, like the door and that stool and even the jacket to a degree, I almost think the jacket does it most successfully, are sort of trying to be ambitious in the same way that a drawing like the way that a drawing tries to be three-dimensional, I want these three-dimensional things to try and be two-dimensional. That's a really, really well put way of telling it. Talking about galleries, talking about how you got your gallery. Did, it get, did you get it because you have a 
a master's degree in so well, I don't I have a I, I have a bachelor's degree but I think I I sort of made friends I, I found people that I really liked and um, who were already in the art world I was sort of around I was just around them so I'd go to openings I'd, I'd sort of do studio visits with them I applied to a lot of stuff and I think it was just um, it was just luck you know, unfortunately, I think it's just, it's a matter of luck. And I think people who work hard get lucky maybe more often than people that don't, but mm. I don't think it's maybe, it's not an exact science, it's just sort of finding you, your- You don't, you don't, you don't consider the, the, the caliber of work or what you're doing. Well, I don't or, know because- Or you're, the, where you're, you're at with it because you're full on. You're a full-on artist that you're doing it. You know, it's not like you're just trying to piddle around. You're doing it. You're selling it. You're selling, selling work. You have work going on. Yeah, I mean, I you think you've taken it. That's a long, long time. You have long tail work. You have, yeah. You you have shows that are coming up. I think, but I I do think it's important to not place too much value into into that because I don't think you know I think it's it's a dangerous it's a dangerous thing to just to value your work based on the reception that it gets in galleries and from collectors and stuff because I don't think you end up chasing you end up chasing something that isn't catchable it's it's much more worthwhile to sort of figure out what you want to do and then just hope that people are attracted to it. Art in itself is, is unstructured and the art world sort of by design, right? And the art world is is similar, you know? They buy for reputation, yeah, they buy yeah, prospectively, so. Yeah. I don't think, it, it's too, I, yeah. I think it's the job of the artist to figure that stuff out or to, to play the game too much because I think if you play the game not to play it that's what I, that's not to play it correct yeah. yeah before I was I was doing art full time I was still making art on the weekends so I sort of look at it like that like I think right now I'm able to afford to make art full time um, and if someday things change and I'm not I, I'll still make art just won't be able to make it quite as like furiously as I am right now. It doesn't mean that I'm not making art anymore. You know, I would still have projects that I'd want to do and I'd still sort of be thinking about them frequently. And, you know, I think that that, yeah. Making studies. Making studies. I think that that's, that's still an authentic experience, you know? Mm -hmm. That is, that is the experience. Yeah it sort of comes and goes and you know did you get the ceramic flower this it's like an oil yeah i call them ceramic paintings they're made so they're made out of fire clay and then they're if you get real tight there's i imprinted canvas texture on them so i had a bunch that sort of began life as um, studies of form and shadow and light um, so they wouldn't get paintings on them. I would I would make them and do subtle variations to the form of the thing so that shadows were cast differently across them. And from that body of work, I was sort of left with these ones that ended up not quite making the cut for that series, but still seemed like worth worth working on more. So. I painted different types of flowers on all of them. Sort of a nice, it's a nice painting surface because it looks like canvas, but it, because it's so hard and rough, it wore the paintbrushes down as I was painting them. So I would sort of watch the paintbrush disappear as I painted these flowers onto the ceramic canvases. I have, let's see, I have one more that I could take out.
I sort of refine the attachment method. And this one, this one. Is that your early. signature? That's my, yeah, the KR is my signature on ceramic stuff. And then my signature on paintings is like usually the kind of wandering text. A little child? Yeah, like a child. Everybody needs a heart. Number four, acoustical titanium stable. Instigator, scheming ways to fill its coffer, stealing trust that lasts a lifetime of toil, indenturing generations to double wide, as greed sleeps in silk bed sewn from lost morals. Draining retirement plans, raping Rosp, planning for future sorrow as greed's thirst grows stronger. Feeding off a monetary blood, flow the color of gold. Gold fever has no limits. Reasons lost. Cancer's cause, created to squeeze every last drop of worth, quieting any voice of a better way, no matter how loud they scream of injustice. How could anyone, or how does someone, are questions never asked in the dungeons of greed and evil. Taken for granted. Everyone's a mark. Walking dead for using the machine. Going to work sporting fluorescent targets on foreheads and backs. Walking to their own funerals as Prophet sends memos from HR. Reed's obsession consumes Eve in itself, feeling nothing as it eats itself to death. No one is safe from its unbridled want, want unsatisfied. No matter the amount of coins and jewels in the vaults, always the need for more, compounding, multiplying its desire of more. No wealth or power is enough. As the weak are forced to yield. As greed walks on the backs of men and women who till the field. Clean the tables. Doing the work for greed's fetish. 
Unfortunately, greed is a human thing. Humans of the lowest caliber, slithering out of the low end of the gene pool. Trailing slime that taints even the toughest of characters. Convincing good to bad with the whiff of money. Bribing honor's badge. Capturing lost souls looking for Margaritaville. A human flaw. Easily twists sane to insane. As greed tightens the reins of your straitjacket. Never letting go. Greed is a master salesman of bad intention. Selling sinister plans of a better nothing. An unending desire to lure the lost. Suffocating horrors only lies can cover. Thin as the veil of false beliefs can be. Sheep follow a tale to their ends. Blissfully giving of their life to quench another's blood, lost fulfilling its reservoir of sin. There's no absolution for greed. She knows the way to Hell's Gate without JPS. Following the scent of misery, down a rut her forebears carved with the bones of forgotten hope. No amount of light will expose true intentions. Actions come from the mind. For some, bad is twined in their DNA. Forming cells infected with greed. Incubating from lessons learned the hard way. Good does not need to hide from the world. Greed evades truth. Lurking from shadows, cloaking perception in layers of confusion and misconception. As the masses march for truth and freedom from oppression while cuffed and gagged. It would be convenient to think the power of love and understanding could combat the power of greed. But it does not. One has to kill evil at every encounter. Constant vigilance is the only salvation against greed. Love brings heartbreak, a cousin of greed. Lunging at my face, he caught my throat and chin with his lower and upper jaws. I was completely taken by surprise. Clamping down on my face and growling, he started to shake and pull away. I could smell and feel his warm, acidic breath puffing in my face.
go. All right. So I, I'm making a box. I wanted, I've been wanting to make more boxes. So uh, I'm actually going to use this box up here as a model. I want to make something like that. That one took, this one took a, a, about a month or so with the whole rig of, it was, it was a kind of a, a pattern jig that I had to make, made it, it was, a, it, was it took a while. I'm going to do a small trapezoidal box it's coming out, some weird shape. Could do a really long one. Oh, that might be fun. Versus a squared up one. You know? I might do that. I like that right there. I wonder if my wood can even do that. Well, pencil can be deceiving. <laughs> You can draw a lot of stuff and then when you make it, that's when the nut has to meet the bolt. Or the other way around, the bolt has to meet the nut. So just, you know. Whatever. Mm. I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna make a pattern. I like to make patterns because it kind of shows me a little bit ahead of time what's going on. And if I'm gonna do something like that, it's all subjective where that line goes and where this line goes. And But I'm thinking that I'm gonna do something. Start with the line right there. Oh, I'm gonna come way over here. Uh, torque it out a little bit. And then come over here. Yeah, well, that'll be funny. Oh, maybe I'll get, so I might want some headroom in there. So maybe come up a little bit longer. Cause I'm thinking I'm gonna have this is a hanging sculpture. I'll have something here that's going to counterbalance it. And uh, whatever that is will be something in that shelf over there. That'll be a little block of something. A little cable cable. So this will be hanging. And I'll hang it or hang some, something like that, maybe. No, maybe. I don't know. That could be fun. I could get a couple of, I'll get maybe, no, I just want, I just want one sculpture in the middle that can be spoinged, <laughs> spoinged, <laughs> spoinged is an official, official sound, right? Maybe it can come off of one, one have a little block on the side where a spoings going there. Oh, I'll just maybe I'll just do a spoings. <laughs> a spoing. <laughs> a spoing on this side and a spoing on that side. <laughs> and then the, right there, there'll be a counterweight, like a, a stone or something. And then something up here. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> Three sprawlings, and I might even get one in the back. So then one's coming up, one's in the middle, right there. And then one's coming off of there, that side. So, I like the severity of this. Going up. Well, it's going to be kind of big. Bigger than I thought. Well, move, move, move. 
Who knows? Whatever. Maybe it is bigger. So if you take that angle and you swing it over here, it will just be a little bit tighter. I just brought that one way down here. All right. Yeah, you don't want to be super tough. Square is kind of one of those unwritten rules. Squares, it's like putting something on the right in the middle of the horizon all the time. Kind of, uh. Now, well, I'm going to get another one. I worked with this Hungarian engineer once who would draw and draft layers of layers of drafting with pencil, and he used he would just use a, a simple pin and pivot and move and then put a line in it and cut a hole and slide. It was he was an amazing uh, mind, but it makes me think of what I can do now. doing is attempting to resolve all the angles and actually origami a piece of wood box it's really just out of flat surfaces but doing weird angles sometimes you gotta figure out different ways of doing it <laughs> Each one of these boxes are so different that it's funny how uh, they happen to unfold or actually unfold. <laughs> now I think I'm going to torque. No, 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 no. This is because you do that. It doesn't even have to be that way. You know what I mean? That's creative license. So if I go way over here, these are gonna be out to here. Yeah, I want a long one. I think it'll sound weird. Aha, uh -huh. it forms. Arbitrary. Arbitrage. Before we commit to removing.
It's hard to show what I'm doing, I know. But I'm just uh, working on some angles. So once I can figure all this out, I'll take each one and I'll make a pattern and it'll just go bloop, bloop. It'll fold together like a, a pattern. <laughs> You're gonna go. Sound might go downward here. The wood is gonna be fun because it came from my friend Fawn, <laughs> who in turn came from his friend who makes high-end bass guitars. Okay, am I committing to this? It doesn't really matter because I can change it on a dime anyway. I'm cheating right now. Oh, that might be actually kind of cool. Maybe a curved surface. I'm gonna roll with that for a second. And that really wants to do that. No, not you. of a curved surface. Magic tape, magic tape. The other thing I remember from a teacher, Mr. Kayala, he would constantly say, projection, projection. Grafting is all projection. <laughs> Which? It is, sort of. Projection. Well, I always thought it was weird to be weird. Now it's cool to be weird. That thing's weird. Let's see what that does. Let's see what that does. Once it's all uh, one piece. It'll be stronger. Now, if I'm gonna do that, I want this piece to be jutting the farthest away. That one's gonna be over there. And uh, we're just gonna go whoop, whoop, whoop.
Hello, 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 hello. Wood would be way better. I like the the whole angularity. It'll hold from here at some point. I have little things here, spoilers right there. I might even be able to get a couple more in there. So that's what it looked like. Can you see? Uh, here's my pattern. I think we're there. Test, test, test. We're going to make some uh, test. Test, test, test. All right, green means go. Green means go. Do some recording. So I gonna make a box with some nice burled wood. I want to find the, the tune of the wood. I think that's E. E. I'm going for a G. I want to get at least three of the same. Looks like another G. G. Another portal, but super G. Super G. B. F. 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 C. F. A, F, C, D, F, F, F. Ooh, that has a hole in it. Ooh, they do sound similar. That makes three Fs. I think we're making that F box.
D D That is one basic F. Frick yeah, that's gonna be a couple of boxes. A pile, D pile, F pile, the G pile. D, F, G, A, D, F, and G. Heck yeah. I think that's gonna be a... Uh... It landed on the F pile. That's an F. That looks like an F, uh, an F box, doesn't it? I'm gonna make this pile into this. Direction. All right, this is the fun part. I'm gonna take this apart, and I got my my F pile. I am going to lay some uh, some wood out. Now we're gonna glue it up. I'm just totally excited about this. I'm digging it. I think it's a weird shape. It's gonna be a beautiful. Yeah, there's some sound going off. This is a go 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 go. I'm always amazed at these patterns. That's how it's done, sort of. A, B, Scoozy, Scoozy, C, D, 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 I'm just gonna do that with E. This will be E, but whatever. Can you see the burrow? The burrow, the burrow, the burrow. This goes to show you, don't try to plan everything out. Okay, that's a good edge. I had some, and a whole other thing in my head that was gonna happen. Where it's gonna be. Oh, I'm just gonna do that. Heck yeah. Totally. One. Two. That all tells me that this is going to be on the inside. Well, as long as these little marks stay there, which they will. And it's going to go together like that. Shavala boom. Shavala boom. Shavala boom. Yeah, let's do that. And then that's a nice little wave. Thanks for joining me in my studio, my shop. Yeah.
very close to cutting and then fitting and then glue it up fit it up glue it up bump, bump. Bum, bum, bum. B. We got a B. B, B, B. Two, two, two. Oh, yeah. I think it's lunchtime. It will just, it will figure itself out. Kind of always does. I'm going to start gluing up my little fit together box. Yes, it's a little bit like that. It'll be a little bit different. This one's going to be bent. And uh, I'm going to start gluing, gluing, and then this last one gets bent into place. So this is fairly tight. I'm just going to glue it up and it's going to be somewhat like this. And there you go. I already sanded all the edges and the little things in the way. You want to get all the burrs off, get all the little pieces and parts because they don't help. I don't know why I thought I'd get this done in one go. How strange. Oh yeah, there's some flex in there. Very 
inspiring for me. He has a, a, a knack and ability to really see what he wants to do and then just go for it. I, I love how everybody has their own process, their own way. It, it's, it's pretty <laughs> individual. It's inspiring for me to talk to artists and listen to how they do their thing and why they do their thing. It was really cool. Nina and I got into it about money and it's not about money. It is about money. It's not about money. It is about, it's about doing it. It's about doing something that's in your head. And, you know, I'll be able to hear this play. <laughs> you know, that's what it's about, I think. I'm going to glue this one up and I'm going to attempt to glue this one on. It's all in line. Put a little slight little angles on everything, fitting it together, and knew it was all focaccia. Lamb a ram. Ooh, you don't care. Just keep going. Cause the bang. I just wetted all these little towels up and uh, sometimes you don't want to get wood wet, but in damage control, get it wet. <laughs> Come on. Come on. All right, we'll take this apart. Oh, Jesus, I'm ready to fall apart.
Oh, ooh, yeah. That's what I like. Little things that I can see. Oh, yeah. I love these clamps. I always love them. I never did love them. I just lost them in the toolbox. How oh, freaking killer is that? <laughs> All right. This one, this is the the box is ready to be taken apart. This is beautiful. And I'm going to leave it right there. Uh, thanks for showing up to Greg Egg TV. I really appreciate uh everybody's comments and the support if you like what you're seeing if you like what you're watching kevin reinhardt kevin reinhardt was an inspiring artist i was really fortunate to be able to you know share some time with him dark thoughts we all have them 
we know we do. Food grade, eat good food. And thanks for watching Sonics, uh, what I'm doing in my sculpture and what I'm doing, uh, you know, on my channel. Keep watching, keep looking for what's going on. There's going to be new things. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, I think this is a C. B, C, 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 B, B. I'm going to take this to the next level. Keep going with it. There's going to be a little sculpture in here, and it's going to hang from somewhere here. You can go to gregegg.com for my art. Share Greg Egg TV, and all of these will be posted separately this weekend. So all of the pieces are on Sonic and Dark Thoughts and Food Grade Food and uh, spotlight artist series so all those will be separate i'm going to keep doing it every third thursday every third thursday the next one is april 18th go to gregegg.com for my art watch for more we'll keep doing it peace thanks for showing up In the dark, there's only you.